Stephen King wrote seven novels under the name Richard Buckman. Which ones are good and which ones are bad? Hi folks, Harry here, and today I will be ranking all of Stephen King's books written under the pseudonym of Richard Buckman. So if you did not know, Richard Buckman was a pseudonym that Stephen King used between the 70s and the 80s until he was outed. And in 1989, he wrote a novel called The Dark Half, which mirrors his experience using a pseudonym. This is one of my favourite books, by the way. So the seven novels which are behind me right now, I'm going to rank all of them from worst to best. All right, so at number seven, the very bottom of the barrel is Roadwork. Bookish drummer, you are going to hate me for this, but I'm gonna tell you why Roadwork is my least favorite Buckman novel. So Roadwork has quite an interesting premise. It's about a man who has a house and people want to build a road right where his house is. So he has to be evicted and his house will be demolished, but he does not want to leave his house because within his house, he has an emotional connection to his son who died. It's a really, really interesting story. And it sounds like it's gonna be really sad, which it is, but it's just not very well written. It's not very engaging. And I didn't have that much fun reading it. So at number six, I'm gonna go with The Regulators. So The Regulators is the companion novel to the far, far better Stephen King novel, Desperation. I struggled to give a plot synopsis for this because it's so weird, but there's this van that drives down this street, I think in Ohio, and they, the people in the van start killing people. It reads like a Western fantasy slash dystopian, and it's just not very well written. It's not that great of a novel. And to be honest, I would much rather read Desperation. So at number five is probably the one that you would put as his worst, and it's Rage. So I don't have my own individual copy of Rage, I only have it in the Bachman books because individual copies of Rage sell for hundreds and I do not have that money. So this rather problematic novel follows a teenage boy called Charlie Decker, who kills his maths teacher and takes his entire class hostage. So for a very, very obvious reason, this book is the only Stephen King book to ever fall out of print. And that is because many school shooters were found with copies of Rage in their backpacks. So a lot of people think that this book was the inspiration for a lot of these school shootings. So it had to be taken out of print. And it's for a very understandable reason. But also this book just isn't that great. It's one of Stephen King's first books that he ever wrote and you can tell it's very juvenile and it just isn't written well. It's thrilling, I read it in one sitting, but it's not that great as a story. It's also very problematic because it's about school shooting, but we all know this by now. So at number four is The Running Man. The Running Man is a really really interesting dystopian that I'm not actually a massive fan of. So The Running Man is set in 2025 and it was written in the 80s, so it's an interesting concept. And it follows a man called Ben Richards who goes on a game show where the objective is just to stay alive. He is hunted down by people and if he survives, then he wins a hell of a lot of money. Personally, I just found this book rather unengaging and because it's so short, I absolutely flew through it because it's really fast paced. But a common theme is a lot of these Backman books are really boring. Apart from the top three on this list, I'd say the other four are pretty boring. But after this, the books get way better. But The Running Man is just a little bit underwhelming for me. So number three is a book that I love so much and I have loved ever since I read it for the first time and that is Thinner. This light really does not agree with this cover. Okay, I've switched copies so it doesn't reflect as much. So this novel follows a man called Billy Halleck who one day runs over a traveller with his car and the traveller puts a curse on him to make him get thinner every single day for the rest of his life until he is nothing but skin and bone. This book does have a really, really terrifying concept and oh my God, God, it was executed so well. This book is really, really, really thrilling. It's so fast paced. I don't think there's a single wasted word in it. The characters are not the best, but I enjoy reading about them. It's also kind of like an anti-hero situation, which I always really like. And the ending is one of my favorite Stephen King endings of all time. It is so harrowing and soul crushing and it leaves you with your jaw on the floor. And I absolutely love Thinner with all my heart. I don't understand the hate for this book. I really, really, really like it. 
Okay, so we've got two left. We've got The Long Walk and we've got Blaze. So I'm guessing you expected The Long Walk to be in the top two, but I don't think you expected Blaze because this one's a little bit more underrated. But I think I'm going to shock you when I'm gonna say that number two is actually The Long Walk. So The Long Walk is one of the best novels I have ever read in my life. Stephen King wrote it when he was 17, which is such an amazing accomplishment for a teenager to write such a dark and mature story. This book is like the Hunger Games before the Hunger Games. It follows 100 boys who are all going on a long walk, like the longest walk that you can imagine. And if you stop walking three times or go under, I think it's four kilometers, four miles an hour, something like that, you get three warnings and after the three warnings you get shot in the head. So people start dropping like flies and it's absolutely insane. People are dying and it's terrifying. And to me, the scariest thing about this book is you meet so many characters and you know that every single one of them, except one, are going to die. Like, it's inevitable. You know that these characters are going to die and that's what makes it so scary and harrowing. I think the majority of Backman books are just really, really harrowing. That's a word that I'm probably gonna use a lot throughout this video and probably have used a lot throughout this video, but that's the best word I can use to describe it. The Long Walk is one of the most harrowing stories I have ever read in my life. It is so dark, it is so brutal. It's really, really fast paced. I read it in one day. I can't think of enough good things to say about it. It is just absolutely bloody fantastic. I really, really struggle to comprehend how a teenager wrote this book because I think this is definitely in my top 20 Stephen King books. Okay, so we've finally reached number one and it's Blaze. I'm not gonna keep putting it off for any longer. Number one is Blaze. So on my overall Stephen King ranking, I have read 62 now, The Long Walk and Blaze are neck and neck. They are neck and neck, but overall, I would say I enjoyed Blaze more than any of the other books. So I have to be honest, I did finish Blaze today, which is probably why I've put it so high, just because I've still got the thrill of just finishing it. So it will probably end up somewhere else on this list sometime in the future. But for now, Blaze is at the top of the list and I need to defend it because this book does not get enough attention and the attention that it does get is not always positive. So Blaze is like a retelling of John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men, which is a book that I have actually not yet read, but I'm a sucker for retellings, so I kind of love this one anyway. So the main character in this book is Clayton Blaisdell Jr., who is known as Blaze, so that's just what I'm gonna call him. He was heavily abused in his youth, and he is comedically unintelligent. And you also meet his partner in crime, George Rackley, and they pull off many successful cons, but then they decide to focus on just one crime, the kidnapping of an infant child. I absolutely flew through this book. It was so fast paced. I'd say this narrative is one of the most tight and concise that I have ever seen Stephen King write. It's absolutely fantastic. And I just have to talk about Blaze himself. Clayton Blaisdell Jr. is one of my favorite protagonists of any Stephen King novel ever. Like I said, he is laughably stupid and it just brings so much humor and lightheartedness to such a thrilling story. By the end of this book, I grew to love Blaze. At the beginning, I thought he was a little bit annoying. I grew to absolutely love him. Because this book is so plot heavy, I feel like I can't really say much else without saying a lot of spoilers. But I have to say, the ending of this book is one of my favorite Stephen King endings. I'd say it's probably in my top five Stephen King endings of all time. It shattered me and I loved it. Okay, so that is my ranking of all seven Richard Bachman novels. Let me know what your ranking is in the comments down below, or if you've only read some of them, let me know which one is your favorite. I'd really like to know. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up and please consider subscribing for more bookish content from me. All of my social media links are in the description below and I will see you next time with a new video. Goodbye. <sighs> Stephen King wrote six, no he didn't.